we thought we'd have a deal to talk about this week, and mm. we might, or we might have one that implodes, and that's where we're heading. We were so optimistic on Friday, Senator Shelby and others with the, sa <laughs> with the 17 people panel, bicameral, bipartisan, trying to come up with some type of border agreement. We thought we were focusing just on the wall. Instead, we find out we're focusing on beds as well. Well, that's what we said on Friday. It came down to beds and border security structure. Uh, they, not, they didn't even get to that. What it all comes down to now is the Democrats are trying to limit the number of uh, detention beds. In other words, you now think about it. If you arrest somebody, if you're ICE and you arrest somebody, if you're going to arrest somebody, you've got to have a bed for them. So really, the administration is steamed at the Democrats because they're telling the administration how many people they can arrest ICE in a year and they want to cap it at 16,500. What's interesting is if you look at prisons across our country, people are saying we don't have enough beds, we don't have enough mm -hmm. beds, we've got to let people out who have the, the shorter offenses. Here we are on the border, we have the number of beds, Republicans want to pour the money out so that the, the criminals don't come in our country, they're detained and they have the beds, yet Democrats are saying we don't care if you have too many beds, we want to limit the amount. So, so we thought we were focusing on just, okay, they're at 1.3, this house was. The Senate had 1.6 billion for the barrier, and then we're trying to get, uh, trying to see if there's a number between the 5.7 the president wants and the 1.3 is what Nancy Pelosi said. So they're getting close to 2 billion, and then they spring this, uh, this spring this uh, push on ICE. Remember they don't, remember they said they wanted to abolish ICE, and they got so much backlash of the Democrats, and they pulled back from that. Right. They are slowly trying to abolish ICE, and they're trying to do it by diminishing their impact, impactfulness and allow people that they normally would detain to keep away uh, to allow, go into the general population. So we got roughly 40,000 beds. Uh, they want to cut it back uh, as, uh, as many as 35,000, maybe less. Uh, they're trying to cap it at 16,500, and the president, I am told, will not agree to limit the number of criminals that ICE is allowed to arrest. If there is a shutdown, and it is a real possibility on this Monday morning, uh, there will be a shutdown because the administration will not allow the Democrats to put a number on the number of people ICE can arrest in any calendar year. It's not about beds. It's the number of people who can be detained. So there, and that's what it all comes so down there to. There could be a shutdown on Friday Absolutely. because folks who are negotiating, they say it's completely broken down right now. The president tweeted about it. He said, the Border Committee Democrats are behaving all of a sudden irrationally. Not only are they unwilling to give dollars for the obviously needed wall, they overrode recommendations of Border Patrol experts, but they don't even want to take murderers into custody. What's going on. And meanwhile, right. there's going to be uh, more talk at the border today. The president's going to have a rally in El Paso. Beto O'Rourke's having a little bit of a march right to that area. That'll be where good. The yeah, it's going to be uh, showing uh, dueling, dueling very popular people in Texas, the president and Beto O'Rourke. Because they're and, upset with him saying in the State of the Union address that the wall works in El Paso. Right, well, uh, which it did. We had uh, the acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, Mick Mulvaney, circulating yesterday talking about the prospects for a government shutdown. Well, it could shut down, but then again, the president still might be able to declare an emergency, even if it is staying open. Nonetheless, he's emphatic. That wall, going to get built. Our attitude at this point, which is, we'll take as much money as you can give us, um, and then we'll go off and find the money someplace else, legally, in order to secure that southern barrier. But this is going to get built with or without Congress. Okay. Is the national emergency, declaring a national emergency, still on the table? Or? It's absolutely on the table. And it's not a precedent, okay? This is the law. There are certain things that every president must do in order to trigger um, the rights that he has to sort of move money around. Right. And he might be able to get some other money from something else to get it right, there. instead of getting the... Mer the Pulling sure. the emergency switch. You know, the president said this is what the Democrats want because they want to take the focus. They want to distract from what's happening in Virginia. So they would love another shutdown so it makes him look bad. And he's saying that many people on the Democrat in the Democratic Party really want to negotiate and they want something mm -hmm. done, but he feels like the leaders in the Democratic Party are stopping. That's and absolutely something right. happened. Senator Mike Lee came out over the weekend and said, I talked to the president, and he essentially said I take two billion. You get me two billion, I'm all right. Keep in mind, he hasn't really between all the regulations and all the forms and getting everybody right. up to speed. They're just starting on the 2017 money now, so they get about 50 miles out of that. You get two billion. There's seven months left in the fiscal year. Then you get another two billion. Next thing you know, you're getting close to right. halfway done, knowing there's there's only a finite amount of people available well, to build the barrier. That the two billion figure is one that's floating around. I I have heard they're not even close to two billion. 
Apparently, the talks have broken down. There is no suggestion when they're going to start again. Uh, and as to an agreement regarding the amount of money that would build a fence or a wall or a barrier, they didn't even take that up because this number of uh, ICE detention beds is a non-starter. Right. I it mean, seems like a stall tactic, will not go doesn't along it? With it. I, I just can't believe that Democrats would give up their ability to govern to Nancy Pelosi. I mean, clearly she is pulling the springs. She's making Senator Schumer look like just a, a soldier for her. All these other people in negotiations. And Tim Ryan was actually talking, I think, with Maria over the weekend. He had no idea that there was even an issue with beds at the border. Yeah. So where did this come from? Why yeah. would that be a problem? A lot of Republicans felt that way over the weekend. Oh, my gosh, another stall tactic, something right. else to bring up. With more Democrats throwing their hat into the 2020 ring, the media are really playing a central role as they try to introduce themselves to the public. Now, Elizabeth Warren announced over the weekend formally, we obviously knew that she was running, but she had to deal with a Washington Post story that brought up the whole Native American controversy again. The Post got a hold of actual handwritten uh, registration card for the Texas bar. Uh, this is several decades ago, in which Elizabeth Warren identified herself as an American Indian. That forced her to apologize again, uh, and has kind of overshadowed her launch. And when you think of Elizabeth Warren now, uh, rather than thinking of the longtime consumer advocate or what she's done uh, as a Massachusetts senator or her criticisms of President Trump, it is hard not to think of this whole um, fiasco, I don't think there's another word for it, uh, about her heritage, even though much of this took place a long time ago. Also running for president, another Senator Amy Klobuchar, uh, generally a well-liked uh, member who is known to uh, many of us who uh, cover the Capitol Hill in Washington. But she's had to deal with two stories, one in the Huffington Post and then one in BuzzFeed News, uh, about how she supposedly is very harsh on her staff. The thing that strikes me about these stories is, all anonymous sources, it's obviously the same group of six or seven people who uh, have worked for Senator Klobuchar who don't like Amy Klobuchar. And so rather than putting their names to this, oh, because they are afraid of retaliation, uh, they've gotten two news organizations to write about how, how tough she is and how cruel she is and, and, and so forth. Uh, and e even in those stories, the people who are willing to go on the record say they enjoyed working for Amy Klobuchar and that, and that you know, she is somebody who drives herself very hard and therefore drives her staff hard. The question has already come up, would these kind of stories be written if this was a male senator who was tough on his staff? I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that it has kind of clouded her launch, and it, it, it's troubling to me. It doesn't mean that it's not true, but, but, you know, would anybody write a story saying President Trump is tough on his staff? Of course he's tough on his staff. That's what happens in big league politics. Now, did she go over the line? Is she too tough? It doesn't seem to me to be, you know, the most salient issue about why she wants to be president. Can she win the nomination? Where does she stand on the various issues? How she's going to try to distinguish herself in the field? Um, but when the, the public doesn't know that much about you, those kind of stories can really um, influence how you're perceived at the beginning. And this raises a much larger question. I mean, it is no secret, and the president certainly complains about it just about every day, um, that the media as a whole have been extraordinarily tough on Donald Trump, overwhelmingly negative from the day he got into the race and certainly uh, during his now two years as president. So are they going to apply the same scrutiny to the Democratic candidates? Uh, and I'm not just talking here about Klobuchar and Warren, but uh, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris and it looks like Bernie Sanders is about to run, and Joe Biden, if he gets in. Uh, it seems to me that, you know, you got to have to be tough on everyone if you want to have any claim to not just being part of an effort to stop President Trump from being reelected. And how these Democratic candidates, and there will be a lot of them, handle the media scrutiny and how they uh, try to drive the news agenda and, and push back against criticism and try to generate positive press. Um, I think it's going to have a lot to do with the outcome of, of this race. I mean, the Democrat right now gets the most attention is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her Green New Deal, which even Nancy Pelosi is being dismissive of. It's gotten an extraordinary amount of attention. It's not that it's not interesting and she shouldn't be covered. But she's been a member of Congress about a month. This thing is never going to make it to the floor if Nancy Pelosi is giving any indication. But it's given the Republicans a very big target to shoot at because the press you could say two things. The press builds up AOC and she, using her Twitter feed and her uh, public comments and the video she makes is a sort of a master uh, at generating media attention. Um, it may well be that Warren and uh, Bernie and Amy 
and Corey and all of them are going to be trying to run for president. But meanwhile, a lot of that spotlight is going to be deflected onto Ocasio-Cortez, which might not help the 2020 contenders.